This is an overview of a Hammond RT2 console. The RT2 console was a large concert model made by Hammond. It weighs 525 pounds. This model was made in 1951. It's going through the main features of this console. This tablet adjusts the volume pedal between soft and normal loudness. These two switches are used to turn the vibrato off and on on the swell or the grate manuals. This is a six position rotary selector switch which is used to adjust the vibrato setting or the chorus setting. These are your harmonic draw bars. This is one set. This is a second set that's assigned to the swell keyboard. These two in the middle are used to adjust the tones on the bass pedals. And here's another set of two that are used to adjust the tones for the grate manual. These two switches here are used to start and run the console. This first switch starts the tone wheel generator spinning. Once it comes up to speed, you then turn the run switch on and after a few seconds of the run motor being on you can release the start switch leaving just the run switch turned on. This series of tablets here and this volume knob are used for the pedal solo unit. This is a unique feature to the RT2 console. This pedal solo unit was used to add additional tones, bright tones, into the bass pedals for the purposes of playing solos on the bass pedals. The bass pedals for the RT2 console are arranged in an arc. There's 32 pedals running from low C up to a G above middle C. That foot pedal down there is the expression pedal or the volume pedal. Uh, there's a light that comes on underneath there to illuminate the foot pedals. And these two switches here I added on. These two control a motor to a Leslie rotor that I'll show you later. These reverse color keys are not played. These are preset selector switches that are used to select different tones for these keyboards. The A sharp and the B are assigned to the draw bars up here. So you'll notice there's an A sharp and a B for the swell. That controls these two sets of draw bars. And there's an A sharp and a B for the grate, which is used to control these two sets of draw bars. So by going between A sharp and B, you can change your settings here on the fly while you're playing. All these other presets can be set any way you want by going to the back of the console and changing some wires. So if you find a setting on the drawbars you like, you can assign those settings to any one of these by going into the back of the console. I'll show that later too. The C preset is a cancel, which cancels everything out. This is the back of the Hammond RT2 console. I thought I'd uh, show you what it looks like because a lot of people have never seen the uh, insides of a Hammond organ. In a Hammond organ, the tones are produced mechanically using a tone wheel generator. This is the tone wheel generator. It runs from here over to here. Inside that tone wheel generator, there are 91 tone wheels. Each tone wheel, depending on how fast it's spinning, and the number of teeth on that wheel determines the various tones from the very lowest notes on the pedals to the very highest tones 
on the manuals. There's a motor on this end of it that's used to start the tone wheel generator. Once it comes up to speed, this motor right here is the run motor, which takes over and then runs the tone wheel generator at a precise constant speed. This is the vibrato scanner, which is driven by this run motor. This box up here contains the electrical delay line that is used in conjunction with the vibrato scanner to create your vibrato and your chorus. This is the back side of one of the keyboards you're seeing here. These two cups here are used to lubricate the organ. This cup routes oil over here to the run motor and the scanner and this larger cup here has two oil lines that run to two different funnels. There's one of them right there and there's another funnel over here, under here somewhere, that eventually lets the oil run down into a tray inside this tone wheel generator. And in that tray there are, for every bearing inside this tone wheel generator, there is a cotton thread that lays inside this oil tray and runs over and is tied to the bearing and that's how the oil lubrication works inside of a Hammond tone wheel generator. These two panels here with all these screws in them are used to configure those preset reverse colored keys that I showed you in the overview. This is the uh, preset panel for the upper manual, and here's the preset panel for the lower manual. This little can here contains a couple of transformers that are used to match the impedances of the tone wheel generator to the preamplifier. This is the preamplifier, which amplifies the signals from the tone wheel generator after they go through the keys that are pressed. It also brings in the signal from the vibrato scanner and mixes that in. And then the output from this is what goes to your tone cabinet. This is the volume pedal. And this large box down here contains the switches for the 32 bass pedals. The pedal solo unit electronic chassis goes here. I have it currently removed until I get the rest of the organ working 100%. Then I'll get the pedal solo unit chassis working and put back in here, but it goes right here. And this box here contains 32 inductors, one for each bass pedal. And these inductors are used in conjunction with the pedal solo unit to tune that pedal solo unit to the correct notes. So that's a quick overview of the inside of a Hammond RT2 console. This shows the starting sequence for a Hammond console. This is the start switch and this is the run switch. That starts it. Once the preamp warms up, then you'll have some music here. Now, I mentioned earlier that the tones are produced by tone wheels that are spinning inside that tone wheel generator. This will give you a pretty good idea that that's what's going on when I turn this off. Listen to what happens to the sound. This is a demonstration of the harmonic draw bars on the Hammond consoles. <clears throat> they work the same for the grate and the swell, so I'm just going to demonstrate them up here on the swell. 
every key on a Hammond console has nine contacts under it. <clears throat> so there's, for every key that you press, there's actually nine possible tones that can be assigned to this key. A lot of the tones are octave tones, but some of them are not octave, some of them are, but they're all harmonically related. So right now I'm pressing on this middle C key, nothing is happening because I do not have any draw bars pulled out. So I'm going to show you what the uh, octave draw bars sound like, starting with the 16 foot, 8 foot, 4 foot, 2 foot, and 1 foot. That's a 16 foot, 8 foot, 4 foot, 2 foot, and 1 foot. All while holding down one key. Okay, now let's listen to what they all sound like one by one. Because some of them are harmonically related, but they're not a C note, like that one. Now if you just pull out one draw bar like that, you're just getting a very a pure tone. Now as I pull out more and more draw bars, I start adding in more and more harmonics and it gets louder and richer sounding. This is a demonstration of the draw bars for the bass pedals. There are two draw bars here in the middle that are used to adjust the tones on the bass pedals. This is your 16 foot tones and these are your 8 foot tones. Because this unit also has a pedal solo unit, you also have 1 foot, 2 foot, 4 foot, 8 foot, 16 foot, and two different 32 foot bass pedal tones available from over here that can also be assigned when the unit's installed. I don't currently have that installed. So for now, it's these two draw bars, which are the same tones that are available on really every Hammond console. This is your 8-foot tone. Sixteen foot tone. Now normally you'll mix the two together. So here's a here's a blend of the eight and the sixteen together. G note is not working at the moment. So that's a demonstration of the bass pedals. Here's a demonstration with maybe some typical draw bar settings uh, for playing some Christmas music. This is with no vibrato at all. Now with this knob here you can select different 
levels of chorus or vibrato. Vibrato is the more dramatic effect uh, because it's pure vibrato signal. Chorus is not as dramatic because it is a blend of the vibrato and the dry signal. This is what it sounds like with chorus level one. 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 Now if I turn it to vibrato one, it's even more. And then levels two and three are even more. Let's go back to chorus one. When you turn vibrato on on the uh, great keyboard, you also get it on the bass pedals. That's no vibrato. That's vibrato on chorus one. is the uh, upper Leslie rotor that I added. Here's what it sounds like, back to no effect at all. And this is the Leslie rotor on the slow speed. Leslie speed. So hopefully that shows the different effects.